Today, I want to tell you about a dark chapter from Nintendo's history that very few people have heard about. About how the code behind Nintendo's biggest arcade hit, Donkey Kong, was stolen from another developer. About how Nintendo illegally produced thousands of copies of the game. And about how Nintendo got sued for 580 million yen because of it. Part 1. The Shadow Developer so, our story starts back in the early 1980s. For decades, Nintendo had been one of Japan's biggest toy manufacturers, but in the early 70s, the company began branching out into the world of arcade games. The only problem was that Nintendo didn't have a single programmer working at the company. So, if you look at Nintendo's early arcade games, almost none of them were developed by Nintendo themselves. Instead, Nintendo struck a deal with a company called Ikegami Tsushinki. So, Ikegami would build the hardware and write the code, while Nintendo built the physical arcade cabinets themselves and marketed the games. Now, nobody outside of Nintendo is 100% sure which games Ikegami Tsushinki actually created for Nintendo. Part of the deal meant that Ikegami never took any credit for the games they created. However, if you look carefully inside the code of the games Ikegami worked on, you can often find little hints left by the game's creators. Ikegami's logo, for instance, can be found hidden inside multiple arcade games of the 1980s. And inside the original ROM for Donkey Kong, you can find an even more obvious clue. This message can be found inside. Congratulation! If you analyse difficult this programme, we would teach you. Telephone Tokyo Japan 044-244-2151, extension 304, System Design, Ikegame Co. Limited. That's right, within the code for Donkey Kong, there's a message offering a job to anyone who manages to get inside the game's data. And written right there is the name of the developer, Ikegame. But before we get to Donkey Kong, we need to talk about another really important arcade game, Radar Scope. Now, Radar Scope is nowadays best known as the game that got turned into Donkey Kong. But when it was released in Japan in 1980, Radar Scope was actually quite a hit. It too was developed by Ikegami Tsushinki. They built the game's motherboard and all the hardware the game needed to run. They programmed all the code too. In fact, it's even rumoured that Ikegami Tsushinki actually came up with the idea of the game in the first place, not Nintendo. But that's probably just a rumour. Now, this next part of the story is probably a little more familiar. Nintendo at the time were just branching out into the United States, and seeing the success of Radar Scope, they placed an order of 3,000 units of the game, which Ikegami Tsushinki duly manufactured and sent over to America. The only problem? Nobody in America liked the game. Nintendo of America managed to shift 1,000 units, just about, but this still left them with 2,000 highly advanced and highly expensive arcade cabinets just sitting in their warehouse. With the company's future under threat, Nintendo of America's president, Minoru Arakawa, asked his father-in-law and president of Nintendo of Japan, Hiroshi Yamauchi, to have a new game developed that could run on those 2,000 arcade machines. Yamauchi asked a relatively new designer at the company, Shigeru Miyamoto, to come up with the game that Nintendo of America had requested. Miyamoto had no technical skills when it came to arcade games, but he drew up hundreds of detailed sketches and plans for the game which would soon become Donkey Kong. Then, he sent all of those details off to Ikegami Tsushinki, where a team of six developers brought his idea to life over the course of three months. After all, Ikegami Tsushinki had designed Radar Scope's hardware, so they were likely the only ones who knew it well enough to retrofit a brand new game onto hardware which was never designed for it. Now, those six developers' names are actually known, so let me read them to you now. There were four programmers, Hirohisa Komenome, Minoru Inuma, Mitsuhiro Nishida, and Yasuhiro Murata. And then, two more developers worked on the ROM itself, Shigeru Kudo and Kenzo Sekaguchi. 
Those six developers are the forgotten creators of Donkey Kong, perhaps the most important arcade game ever. And for their work on the game, Ikegame was paid 10 million yen, just under 300,000 US dollars adjusted for inflation. The contract between the companies stated that Nintendo wasn't allowed to produce copies of the games themselves, nor were they allowed to authorize any other company to do so. Now, Ikigami Tsushinki created 2,000 conversion kits, which could be used to convert a radar scope arcade machine into one that could play Donkey Kong. Nintendo themselves created 2,000 stickers, which could be stuck over all the branding for radar scope. And then, the three employees working at Nintendo of America were tasked with converting those 2,000 cabinets into the new game by hand, one by one. And so, Nintendo were quite pleased, you can imagine, when Donkey Kong went on to become a hit in America. Actually, it was more than a hit, it was a phenomenon. So popular was Nintendo's new arcade game that Nintendo immediately ordered around 8,000 more units of Donkey Kong from Ikegame Tsushinki. Nintendo's contract gave Ikegame exclusive rights to manufacture Donkey Kong hardware at the price of 70,000 yen per game, about 1,700 US dollars adjusted for inflation. However, it was at this point that Nintendo committed their first of two crimes. Presumably fed up with waiting for Ikegami to produce more arcade machines, or perhaps not wanting to pay the fees demanded by the company, Nintendo began illegally copying the ROMs produced by Ikegami Tsushinki and producing more Donkey Kong hardware themselves. That way, they could ship this hardware to America and sell more Donkey Kong arcade machines without any involvement from the game's developer, Ikegami. Nintendo ended up producing about 80,000 Donkey Kong arcade machines this way, which utterly dwarfs the 8,000 machines they ordered legitimately. Now, obviously, this completely went against the terms of Nintendo's contract with Ikegame Tsushinki, especially since Ikegame believed that they owned the rights to Donkey Kong's code, not Nintendo. We'll get to more details on that later. But here's the thing. It wasn't actually this first crime, this illegal production of 80,000 Donkey Kong machines, that got Nintendo in legal trouble. No, their real problem only came one year later. Part 2. The Sequel So, with Donkey Kong a huge hit in the US, the obvious next move for Nintendo was to produce a sequel. Again, Nintendo's president, Hiroshi Yamauchi, asked Shigeru Miyamoto to design this game, which Miyamoto was delighted about. So many of Miyamoto's ideas for the original Donkey Kong arcade game had been cut to get the game done in time, but now he had a chance to use some of those ideas. The basic plan for this new Donkey Kong game was to reverse the roles. This time, Mario would be the enemy, not the hero. At first, Miyamoto wanted to have Donkey Kong as the player character, but Donkey Kong was too big to move around on screen, he would fill most of it. So, Miyamoto instead created a new character to fill this role, Donkey Kong Jr, the game's namesake. Now, by this point, Nintendo had started hiring more game development staff, like programmers. And so, instead of having Ikegame Tsushinki develop the game and giving them exclusive rights to sell it to Nintendo, this time Nintendo would develop Donkey Kong Jr. in-house. And that was fine, there was no reason Nintendo couldn't do that. However, since Donkey Kong Jr. was going to reuse a lot of the basic gameplay of the original Donkey Kong, Nintendo figured, why should their in-house programmers have to build the sequel from scratch? Instead, Nintendo wanted to reuse the code that Ikegami Tsushinki had written for the game. But Nintendo didn't ask Ikegami Tsushinki for that code. They didn't draw up some agreement between the two companies. Instead, Nintendo went behind Ikegami's back. They hired a different company called Iwasaki Giken to reverse engineer Donkey Kong's source code based on the ROMs that Ikegami Tsushinki had produced for Nintendo. Now, Nintendo did not legally own that source code. It was the property of Ikegami. 
But secretly, Nintendo used that reverse engineered code as the basis for their sequel, Donkey Kong Jr. An estimated 66.3% of Donkey Kong Jr.'s source code is identical to the code written by Ikegame Tsushinki. About two thirds of the game was plagiarized. And when Ikegame found out, they were not pleased. And so began the legal troubles. Part three, the lawsuit. So in 1983, Ikigami Tsushinki filed a lawsuit against Nintendo for copyright infringement to the tune of 580 million yen, about 14 million US dollars adjusted for inflation. The suit encompassed both Nintendo's illegal production of those 80,000 Donkey Kong arcade machines alongside the use of Ikigami's code in Donkey Kong Jr. So who was in the right? Well, the deal between the two companies never specified who the copyright owner of the code was. At the time, computer code wasn't even protected under Japanese copyright law. So, this made things pretty murky. Nintendo president Hiroshi Yamauchi made the following statement at the time. This lawsuit is hard to understand. When we developed Donkey Kong, which was put on the market in 1981, we outsourced the development of software to Ikegami Tsushinki. We paid for it and it was all over. Since Donkey Kong sold explosively, mainly in the American market, it is presumed that they filed their suit under the advice of lawyers. And so, this 1983 lawsuit continued on for the next seven years. In those seven years, Ikegami Tsushinki left the video game industry entirely, moving their focus to medical equipment instead. In 1989, six years later, Japan's copyright law was revised and computer code became copyrightable. And one year later, in 1990, it was decided in court that Ikegami was the legal owner of Donkey Kong's source code. Nintendo owned the characters, the gameplay, the idea of the game, the name Donkey Kong even, but Ikegami owned that original code. And that same year, Nintendo and Ikegami struck a deal out of court. The details of that deal were never made public, but a large sum of money almost certainly changed hands in 1990. Which may have had an interesting effect, because two years after Donkey Kong appeared in arcades, Nintendo themselves ported the game to their new home console, the NES. And since that port was done by Nintendo themselves, they wrote the code from scratch, and they owned that code. And Every time that Donkey Kong has been re-released by Nintendo since then, it's always been the NES version, not the arcade version. In fact, over the last 40 years, there have only been two exceptions to that rule. In 2018, the game Arcade Archives Donkey Kong was released, a faithful port of the original Donkey Kong arcade game. And in 1999, Donkey Kong 64 came out, also featuring the full original arcade version of Donkey Kong. For years, it was believed that the game's developers, Rare, must have snuck this game past Nintendo without them noticing. But according to Mark Stevenson, a developer on the game, Rare just uh, asked Nintendo. And they said yes. So perhaps the Ikigami Tsushinki saga wasn't the real reason Nintendo never re-released Donkey Kong's arcade version, perhaps they just didn't want to. But either way, now you know the truth. Nintendo, specifically Shigeru Miyamoto, was of course instrumental in the creation of Donkey Kong. The whole game was Miyamoto's idea from the start, and he planned out every last detail of what would become Donkey Kong. But there's another side to the story. Those six developers from Ikigami Tsushinki, the company that Nintendo betrayed. And I think those six developers deserve to be remembered for their part in creating the world's most influential arcade game. Hey, thanks for watching to the end. This was a really interesting story to research. Some of the details are really hard to find information about. Anyway, I will see you next week. Adios.